All right, Dr. Adam Hetchko, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you, Dr. Berlin. So um, would you mind just introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about who you are and why we're talking today? Sure. Uh, my name is Dr. Adam Hetchko. I am the current president of AHA for just the next few days. And then caught you at the end. You did. And it's been a fantastic journey. Uh, I have been with the board now. I will be going on my eighth year with the board of directors. And I have a small animal practice just south of Cleveland, Ohio, uh, with five other doctors, and it's an amazing team. Awesome. So shout out to your team. Oh, they're fantastic. A couple of them are here at the, co- at the conference, and uh, I couldn't have uh, been able to participate as much as I did uh, as president of AHA this year without the support I had from them back home. Yeah, that's fantastic. So I'm glad they're supportive because I know it's probably hard to have you away a lot, but we really appreciate them lending you. Oh, to thank us. you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so Adam, we've we've you know had a few conversations at conferences in the past, and it's been really nice getting to know you. And I know you're passing the gavel, as we call it, mm-hmm. um, soon to our new board president, but. I was just wondering, you know, first of all, we're here at Connexity right now, and the theme for this conference this year is uh, create a better world. And I just wondered what that means to you in veterinary medicine. What does a better world look like? Uh, it, it's multifaceted for our practices. It's it's not just a, a veterinarian. It's not just a practice owner or a practice manager or a technician or assistant. It's the whole team. Mm-hmm. And we've seen struggles with all of our teams. It's such a big topic right now of being short-staffed and figuring out ways to uh, improve the the workflow of your team. And in doing that, I think that helps with burnout. And I think that that helps to make the world a better place because then we have more energy to devote to every patient that comes into our practice. And at the end of the day, that's who we all identify as walking into that practice. That's why we all fell in love with this profession. Absolutely. And I'm noticing a theme, too, when I'm asking people, um, you know, what they think that better world looks like, which is there's they involve other people Mm -hmm. in that. It's never just like I can make this a better world by doing this. We all have a role to play, but that team effort and that togetherness lifting each other up seems to be something that um, that a lot of leaders in this profession see as a common theme. And I I know that you're you're doing a table talk here at the conference, um, and that it sort of fits with that theme, right? It does. What what is it that you're going to be talking about? I'm going to be talking about uh, staff utilization when yeah. you're short staffed. Yeah, I mean that's a you know you just it just rolls off the tongue so easily, <laughs> but like that is a major topic, oh. and I feel like everybody is dealing with that right now. Yeah, nobody has enough people, and they're trying to figure out how to find other people while getting by with the people they have yeah. and not overworking those people. I would agree, and you know even through this conference. While I'm in this conference, I have friends texting me from home saying, I'm struggling, I have to you know, close a day, I have to reduce hours, I have to close my daycare or change the way I operate. And uh, it can be really overwhelming uh, when you're just trying to put out that fire and mm-hmm. just trying to survive. But when you can take a step back, and I know it's really hard, it's been hard for me over the years, but when I can take a step back and look at it more globally, and then start to dial in on those low-hanging fruits and those little things that have tremendous impact on the entire team culture. Yeah. It it makes it all of a sudden something feels like something that you can achieve. Yeah, that's a really good point. It, it's so easy to feel like we're in survival mode mm-hmm. and just say, you know what, like we just got to get through today so that then we can get through tomorrow and I can deal with this stuff later when things are better. Mm-hmm. But if you don't deal with the stuff... Maybe things aren't going to get better, yep. at least not as fast. Well, I think, but it, and that's a great point. It's it's changing the narrative. Yeah, and it's something we've talked about here in Aha, and something we've talked about at previous uh, connexities is we have the ability to change and create that narrative. And just thinking, I'm going to get through today, so I can get through tomorrow, and to get through the weekend, so I have a breather because it's going to be just the same next week. But if you can say. I'm going to solve this today because it's going to help me tomorrow, next week, next month, and next year. I'm just going to pick one little thing that I think is going to have tremendous impact. And in my practice, 
I've learned over the last couple of years with the pandemic how important it is on how you deliver that to your team mm-hmm. and how that uh, reflection is brought out. And change is scary. Yeah. But when you approach it in the right way and you and you give the opportunity, give is probably not the best, but provide an opportunity uh, for collaboration and feedback, you can make a lot of changes that resonate with your team, improve morale, reduce burnout. I like to use the, exper- the word experiment a lot. I no longer say we're trying this or doing this or here's our new protocol. Yeah. I say experiment. Today is our new experiment. Because to me, experiment is it might work, it might not work. It's not final. The team doesn't think, oh my gosh, we're going to do this. It's going to fail. And we have no way out. When you use the word experiment, it gives them the comfort to say, I don't like this experiment, or I love this part of the experiment, but I want to try this. Yeah, that's cool. And it makes everybody feel like they're trying something new together, which mm-hmm. is sort of an adventure versus the whole, like, we're implementing this policy change. Yep. Like, the, this is the email we all hate. It's <sighs> like the email from above. It's like, from now on, we will be doing things this, this way. Yep. And no one's asked you, and you're the one having to do it, mm-hmm. and no one said, hey, like, what makes this easier or harder for you? Mm-hmm. So I really like that. As somebody who was a career associate, never wanted to be an owner or manager, um, definitely did not have that aspiration and didn't have that voice in the practices I worked in. It was really nice when someone would just ask us Mm -hmm. what would make your job easier and how do you think this procedure would work Mm -hmm. from your point of view. So that's very cool. I think the important thing that I've taken out of this over the years is I don't have to have all the answers. Yeah. I have to be inquisitive. I want to learn. I want to grow. Mm -hmm. And I can see it through somebody else's eyes when I ask those questions. Yeah and present it in a way that's experimental. It seems simple, but it's not something that every practice owner does, Mm -hmm. for sure. It's a very conscious effort. Mm -hmm. And the first few times I did it in my practice, when we made these big changes because of the pandemic and everyone's panicked and they're rolling their eyes because they don't know what's going to happen. And then we try it and they they give some fantastic feedback and then Mm -hmm. we do it again and do it again. And now it's become a part of our culture of... Let's experiment with it. Yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. And I we've all gotten a little bit more custom change, I think, mm-hmm. in the last few years. So um, the last two years especially, and that is at once good because we know we can change and it won't be so bad probably, mm-hmm. like as bad as we think it will be anyway. But also when like how you buy your groceries has changed, then the last thing you want is more change. Right. So the change fatigue is real. Yep. Um, I do think, you know, there's something to be said for experimenting at work in a way that provides an atmosphere of safety. Mm -hmm. Like, experimenting can be scary. Like you said, change is scary. But there's something that feels safe about embarking on these things together and knowing that they could be temporary or they could be changed. Trust is a big part of that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, as a leader in the practice, being able to take feedback and, and That's tough hear sometimes. it because yeah. sometimes it's not what you were expecting. Yeah, and to be able to say, oh, "You're right. That, that's not how I looked at it. That's not how I interpreted it." And what a great perception. Yeah, you have to be humble. Yeah, that's true. I, giving and accepting feedback. <clears throat> That's a whole podcast episode in it, itself. I, yes. <laughs> That's maybe a whole series. I think that might be a whole podcast. That somewhere. probably would be. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's a big topic. And to be a great leader, you have to allow yourself to be humbled a little mm-hmm. bit that way, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. So you are on your way out as far as your tenure as board president mm-hmm. of AHA. And I was curious, just because after having a few conversations with you, I'm pretty convinced that, like, board presidents at AHA haven't always looked like you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I would like to know, you know, what are some changes that you've seen in the last year and in the last few years that, you know, you've been on the board and what would you like to see in the future for AHA? Like, what do you want people to know about leadership at AHA? Yeah. Uh, I, again, I've been with the board now for seven years. As I roll off as president, I'll get to take a step back as uh, the past president and I'll still get to participate I think leadership is is something that's really evolved in our organization, and I think it's something that has become really important, um, both for the board and for our team at AHA. 
And uh, over the years, I have seen those changes uh, of we're going to do or make this happen and we're going to take that feedback and we're going to design it around the team that we have. And I think the big thing that I see with Garth now is the way that he operates. It's it's human-centered design. He yeah. designs what the group helps to design what the whole group wants and it's an inclusive approach there's always room to improve by far yeah but i think as we as we roll forward i hope our board continues to be inquisitive and to yeah. look beyond at what's in front of us and what the future can hold because today some of the things that we're talking about in connexity are the, the result of that thought process and that ingenuity and that excitement to move our profession forward between the benchmarking and our cohort accreditation now bringing communities together mm-hmm. uh, and the certificates program, uh, taking our guidelines and turning them into fantastic learning opportunities that we just don't have to go through 24 pages of a, of a document, but it's immersive and interactive. I am so excited to see those type of things continue with AHA yeah. s- to help our profession. And the one thing that, that I, that the big change that I would say that I've seen over the years is recently we've really put a focus on looking for what our members want through surveys. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure many of our members that are listening probably have heard or seen a survey come through at the request of AHA and their voices make a difference. Yeah, Those surveys are presented to our the leadership uh, team at AHA. They're presented to the board. They give us so much great information so that we know we're putting our efforts and our in, uh, infrastructure and investments in the right place to help our members in a scientific way. Like there's no doubt. This is what we. This is what our teams want. We're going to deliver. That's a really uh, that's a, a good observation because I've only been at AHA for you know for less than a year now, mm-hmm. and so I don't know how things used to be done. But I do see the number of surveys that we send out, and I know people you know you get a lot of surveys in your email, and and you know sometimes things just appear, and you're like I don't know how important this is. Like, are they really going to listen, or is this just a a move that they're making just? to try to give the appearance of listening. And I can assure you, we have lots of meetings about the results of those surveys and about the types of questions to ask. And I I hope people will take the time to fill them out if they haven't done that in the past because that those surveys really do drive decisions, big decisions that we make at AHA. And I absolutely agree with you. Like the leadership at AHA is why I'm here. Um, because I know how unusual it is to have such a, a trusted and solid organization mm-hmm. that's been around for a, such a long time be in a growth phase and a forward-thinking phase with leadership who really wants to affect change and not just keep things status quo. Mm-hmm. Um, and they want to do it soon. Like There's a certain amount of impatience in the atmosphere sometimes, and I love that because... We just are so, everybody's so excited to do what we can mm-hmm. to drive things forward and to give people support that they need. And I, it's such an energizing environment. So um, thank you for being a president who feels that way too and is helping to push that forward and not not hold it back. Because I know that hasn't always been the case in organizational medicine period mm-hmm. um, and definitely at AHA. I know, you know there have been periods of, stillness and and I love that the, that we're in a period of growth right now I, I can't agree more I think the partnership that the board has with mm-hmm. the aha team and Garth is the strongest I've seen in the last seven years that I've been on the board I love that. and it it feels collaborative yeah you know you and I are here talking yeah today. that's not something that we would have done years ago right and so these types of little interactions and recognizing the whole AHA team when we're at this conference really yeah. gives us an opportunity to continue to strengthen our resolve for our members. Yeah, absolutely. I, I always want people to know when they ask me about my job or when they, they talk <coughs> about AHA and they're like, what is it like working there? And I want them to know how much AHA is driven by passionate people. Like even people that 
never worked in vet med before. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's an organization. There are going to be people from all different backgrounds, and that makes us stronger. And it definitely brings perspectives that we need. You know, most veterinarians don't have a lot of training in a lot of other things, so we need input from people in all different with all different backgrounds. But the underlying theme is one of passion and real love for this industry. Mm-hmm. And I, that's the number one thing I want people to know when they think about AHA is, you know, it's, we're not just out to make stuff, mm-hmm. you know, so we can say we made it. Right. It's like everything we do, we want it to be helping With people. purpose. Exactly. If there's a purpose behind it. Yeah, yeah. And we want to hear about it if it's not meeting that purpose yep. or if there's something that we're not doing that we could be doing. But um, I really... I really appreciate your perspective and your leadership, which is you're the only president I've ever known at AHA. (laughs) So, so, you know, to me, it's just, you're the president. That's how it goes. Um, But in fact, your, your name tag just says president. So president of what? Yeah. Um, So I, but I appreciate that leadership so much and I'm excited to see what happens in the next chapter. Um, But you know, we'll still see you around. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Adam Hetchko, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you, Dr. Burlow.